All right, so can you guys hear me? Cool? All right. Okay, so uh, let me just start by asking, how many of you guys here are business analysts? Like you deal with Excel, you have a lot of visualization to do, you know, people come to you with like Excel files, hey, can you get something done? Uh, and then you maybe at the same time, you have to also, uh, maybe at the same time you also use Jupyter. Any one of you are at their early stages of um, learning Matplotlib, learning Seaborn, about visualizations. Ah, cool, 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 okay. So um, my stance is just very basic. Uh, when you run like different kinds of analysis for your data, right, especially if you want to join Kaggle competitions and then you try to show people your data, uh, most of the time you have your charts built up in Jupyter Notebooks and um, you kind of like export the uh, the images, right? And then you try to show to pe different people online. So um, I'm here to suggest a way uh, for you to overcome that so that you can have more interaction, um, people can play with your data so that they can know your uh, analysis better, All right? So, because uh, I think as a fellow Python user, I understand that, you know, a lot of your hard work goes into making one visualization, but people will come on, come in and ask questions like, hey, so can you give me this, can you give me that, and you need to tweak stuff, right? So it takes a lot of effort, you can't do it at the same time, you know. I don't want your effort to go to waste. So um, that's just uh, me. Uh, can't see me that very well, but here I am. So I am the analytics lead for a skincare company called um, Paula's Choice Singapore. We're primarily e-commerce based. Uh, so I run like basic, uh, I run dashboards, uh, I have conducted um, like Excel and Python workshops before and uh, basically my aim is to implement uh, business intelligence as well as running data science within the organization. So I'm also an instructor in uh, port education. So we have um, upcoming like also Power BI, Python, Excel workshops going on. All right. So to tell you the story, right, um, you kind of usually need more than one chart, right? So um, this is the part where I think if you use Jupyter or you know, programming a lot, you kind of lack a bit. Um, how, why, what do I mean by that, right? Let me just give you a quick demo what I mean. So like, okay, sure, you know, Jupyter, anyone uses Jupyter notebooks? Cool, okay. Are you, sorry, are you just starting to use? Just learning Matplotlib, those kind of stuff? Are you fairly experienced? <laughs> I wouldn't say that very experienced, but yeah, I do. Okay, cool. Uh, so, like, you know, you, you kind of try to run some basic analysis and you try to, you know, get a kind of like um, story from the data. But most of the time when you show this to uh, someone or you put this in a slide, then the person will be like, okay, so what, right? Oh, um, and the problem is like, uh, what if the person comes in and asks, can I do this in a yearly basis? Can I see how this changes by year? Can I see how this changes by country? You know, uh, I think if you are just starting out to learn Python, that can be a bit overwhelming. Um, what are some of the workarounds, right? So some of the workarounds may actually be uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, from what I've uh, been researching so far, you can use Altair, you can use, uh, you can use Plotly. I think Plotly, to a large extent, achieves what I'm trying to do here. So if you are not very interested, you can kind of like learn about that as well. Um, but, you know, even if you were to learn um, a new package, right? Number one, the effort is so much. Number two, the interactivity is like sometimes, you know, limited to this, okay, sure, you know. What if you have other charts involved, right? What if you have other kind, uh, data sets involved? So um, that's pretty much where I'm coming from. And uh, here, um, I think most of us can probably, or at least people like business analysts, right, will most of the time think, hey, I can just do this on Excel anyway, right? I can just pop a pivot table, pop a pivot chart, and try to just link everything up. I don't need to learn a new package to do this. So. Uh, how do I um, 
so what is my suggestion? My suggestion is to park these uh, things that you work on Python into Power BI. Uh, because if you have used Excel before, you are going to be pretty much familiar with uh, Power BI. You can just drop the visualizations right away. So what do I mean by that, right? Um, let me just give you a quick example. So right. OK. Oh, that's a bit. OK, so if you guys recall, this is the uh, pair plot uh, that we ran earlier. And this is also like the correlation graph um, performed, uh, I mean, shown in a heat map. And these are the other things that you typically, as a business analyst, would need to use, right? You just get like some kind of um, Excel file, and then uh, you have all these data. And then, uh, you know, usually you just show a sales by year, that kind of uh, visualization. So, most of, uh, so what you can do here is if you build these things on Power BI, right? When you have like a manager coming in and asking, hey, so how does this person do, you know, uh, for uh, the sales in that particular uh, region, the person that, uh, I mean, the regions that the person is in charge, then basically, oh, I think it's because the person doesn't have any, yeah. So basically, uh, what you can do is when you zoom into a particular uh, seller, if you notice the seaborn plots and also the heat maps, they all change according to the specific uh, scenario, which I think is a very huge value add for someone who you know does most of your hard work on um, seaborn on uh, Jupyter notebooks. So. Uh, if I want, I can also click on you know different segments, and I can uh, it takes some time to load, but basically you can see how things change, right? And you can and okay, so and what is exactly the code involved in this thing uh, for this chart? Uh, I don't know. If, can you guys see it? It's that simple. Import import my plot lib. Uh, you have your data sets uh, by default created already, and then you just SNS pair plot, right? It's that simple, and for beginner beginner Python users, you know, it's just really really very helpful, and you you can just kind of like share this file with other people for them to use. Any questions so far? No. Okay, so. Uh, let me just feel, how does it generate the plot? You mean this one? Yeah, This one. Yeah. Oh, so this one uh Yeah. So this is uh another one. Basically, all the work that you have on a Jupyter notebook, right? Or all the work that you spend um, creating this visualization on um well, on Python, you can pretty much just translate the code like all the stuff let me show you no. so you kind of like experiment with stuff uh, on Jupyter right and then this is all the code that you have and then you end up building this visualization so what you then do is you create like a like a container for Python, and then like you drop it into uh, into the blank space over here. You decide what data is required to plot the graph. So this is um, like a sales data. You can you know, put in discount or all sorts of stuff. And then all you need to do, which is uh, what you get here, sales, discount, profit, you know, shipping costs. So these are the things that you need to plot, right? So from there, the code that you need to chuck into Power BI is this. You just pretty much like 
copy paste from Jupyter Notebook and then uh, you just need to change the name of your data frame from whatever that you called it earlier into uh, the so-called data set. So data set equals the things, um, the Python data frame that you uh, put into this table here. Like really almost zero work involved. And um, the person who needs to see this visualization, you know, if you're a data scientist, or even if you're just a business analyst learning um, the basics of Python, right? This will come in very handy. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can just change all the, you know, the usual line charts. You can change the bar charts. And um, the person can go in and just interact with it. So um, this helps a lot with the way you, uh, your stakeholders interact with your data. And um, you, know, you, don't have to come, you don't have to have your colleagues come in and ask, hey, you know, can I get this for country level? Can I get this for on a monthly basis? Right? Um, if I need to, I can just do a slider of a different periods. And then all the visualization here will be updated according to what you need to show. Yes? How do you subversion any code changes in such a uh, room? Like, like how, how does it work? Because like, you would probably work with GitHub and you keep a separate uh, type script for maintaining any changes to the script that you use here. Yeah, so far, I think, uh, so far that's what I do. Uh, I don't, uh, so this is, this feature was just announced by Microsoft in August last year. And a lot of it is still being developed. But by and large, uh, for you know, a quick and dirty visualization, I think this achieves uh, what is needed. And I think you know, for a company, if you are running your own business, or if you just want to start out, like even just tackling some of the Kaggle competitions by doing visualization, right? you don't need to restrict yourself to just plotting visualizations on Jupyter. This is a lot more efficient. This is a lot more interactive. And uh, I think that's uh, one way for me to demonstrate. Uh, yes? Uh, what modules do you have available? Do you choose the modules you want to do? Like, you're using CLOM here. Do you have any sort of Oh, uh, no. So the good thing about this uh, Power BI right, is that you do, you, it relies on the modules that you have installed on this PC. So you don't need to worry about like, uh, whether or not Python support, I mean Power BI supports Seaborn. By and large, they work. It's just that you should, try, you should avoid having very complicated scripts inside. Uh, my recommendation is to have an output of your machine learning um, you know, uh, algorithms and put them in here so that you can very quickly run visualizations for the end user to interact. Yeah, that's my use case here. Uh, I do not uh, encourage you running like, you know, uh, TensorFlow or whatever in here because for the time being, Power, Power BI will not uh, continue, will, will stop uh, the calculations that, that run over five minutes. So yeah, don't expect to do like full ML work over here, but for a very quick and dirty visualization, uh, it gets the job done. Yes. Then how do you expose the? What happens if you expose the? Oh yeah, it's really cool because you can expose, and I also have a lot of my to call it. You can export the dashboard to a web page. Yes. And it actually works surprisingly well, and even the R stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, for that, you kind of need to pay the pro version, but it's just five bucks a month. So uh, it will support the visualization uh, on the, the web interface. So let me just see if I have an example up here. Okay, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's, I don't have it here, but if you have the pro version, you can show it. So, uh, but I think, you know, even, even if you don't have the pro version, uh, if you want something very simple, you know, kind of like it's free, right? 
Okay, so. So if you so um, because this is mostly for business uh, analytics purposes, I would recommend getting the pro license and just you know putting it up online. Mm -hmm. How would you do it with the public DSP controls for your organization? I because the app hmm? framework might be different, right? And the big power BI is different. Mm -hmm. So how would you integrate the visualization you create in power BI in your application? Because your users will access the data through your application, not the power BI dashboard. So far what I have done is to publish a link for my um, colleagues to visit. So I mean uh, I myself have not tried uh, or basically use this in a corporate environment, so I don't know how that actually works out. But how is it compared to Apache Superset? Uh, I haven't tried that, so I don't know. How about compared to Tableau? I think Tableau can do this in the new. Yes. So that was a, that's a very good question. So I basically okay. So you can import your DS output. Okay. Yeah. So my next slide is actually actually this. Um, so, I have a couple, I actually tried this on Tableau as well, uh, but a couple of things that sprang into my mind is that number one, you can use Power BI kind of like for free and you don't need to use uh, Tableau because Tableau like you have to pay after 14 days, right? So, um, and then number two, the setup for Tableau is actually slightly more complicated. You need to launch the uh, Server uh, within Power BI uh, within here. Where is it? Help. And you actually need to launch a server in order for you to start running Python calculations within Tableau. And then after that, a lot of your um, Python scripts are actually used as a form of um, calculated field, like a measure. So by and large, even if you uh, are able to create the calculations like you know correlation or whatever, right? You can by and large you are still restricted to the visualizations within Tableau. So um, you kind of need to uh, select the different. Oh, so small. You know, like on the top right corner, there's the select different visualization uh, option, and then you need to you can select different like violin plots. You can select box and whisker plots. So I think if you are a fresh Tableau user, you kind of like, you know, I, you have to relearn the whole thing. So for me, my objective is I have a Python script. It gives me a, like it gives me a visualization. I want to just park it into somewhere. I don't need to worry about all these things. I don't need to worry about Vega D3. I don't need to worry about Altair. And pop, I can get a visualization out. Pop, I can have someone interact with um, the line charts, the country data, you know, just zoom in, zoom in out, so that your managers can quickly understand the data. So that's where I'm coming from. I think this, you have the ability to run like really long machine learning scripts on Tableau, um, but I haven't done much of that as well. And like uh, my main focus is just quick and easy, quick and easy, you know, something that even a beginner matplotlib Seaborn user can use. Yeah, so uh, I actually wanted to demo, but uh, I'll just give you guys a quick view of how simple this can be done. I'll just do a quick one, all right? So this is a fresh page, right? And usually we get data from Excel. So I'll just, you know, get from Excel. And then uh, you can get this thing and uh, you can just load it. Just uh, <coughs> all right. So then, you know, just uh, enable the script. 
I mean, like I have, I will, I can post the link on how to install and run these things. But I'm just showing you after after you in, after you install it. So if I want to run some basic calculations like the pair plot just now, uh, discount profit, shipping cost, unit price, sales. So all these things will be stored in a pandas data frame here. And then uh, what is required is just uh, to avoid issues, let's just drop NA data set equals data set dot drop NA import uh, plot lib dot plot SPLT import seaborn SNS SNS dot pair plot data set plot dot show I hope I didn't make any mistakes there yep so that's it and then you know if you have other stuff you can just uh, create a line chart and then uh, sales by whatever right like region maybe and then uh, you can even have a slicer just something maybe like a province and then like the person can just go in and interact and then this thing see the loading thing and then after a while like I mean you can think of you can just basically put anything you want uh, and you know it's a lot more effective and uh, yeah let me just go back oh, wow. all right Would it be possible to see the raw data? of the data set that I just parked yes. in oh it's oh sure 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 sorry about this so that's it The data set that I used is actually a very common um, sales data set. Uh, let me just hide everything. You know, it's just uh, transactions, order date, the usual stuff that you get within a business environment, you know, sales, discount, ship mode, customer name, product category. Yeah, so it's very applicable, very relevant to I think you know even everyday business analysts. Yes, you. Someone else had any other questions? Is there, is there any limitation on the size of the data? Uh, yeah. So for now, it is hundred and fifty thousand rows. Um, yeah, but like I said, if you want, if your intention is to feed in like an actual raw data and uh, perform like you know a lot of data wrangling, data cleaning on it, I wouldn't advise that. I would advise you to plug in like a uh, final kind of like um, prediction table so that you can very quickly run your heat maps and pair plots on it. Yes? Yeah, it stays. So you just need to click refresh. Yeah. This thing. So the dashboard, you can save it up uh, in powerbi.com. Uh, but if you want to refresh, the files have to, because this is a desktop environment, right? So your Excel files, it will remember where the Excel file is. Every time you update the Excel file, then it will just pull from the Excel file. Yeah, it's not meant to be like a corporate level kind of visualization. It's just very quick and simple, you know, very hacky. It's very, I think, useful for someone who's a beginner or intermediate Python learner. Yes, uh, I personally I use um, the Pi, the Power BI dashboard to discuss like sales and um, like order purchasing decisions with my team. Uh, it's not I don't I mean it's not here, but I basically run um, a lot of Python Python scripts using a, doing a GET query from our uh, from our what do you call that from our like TrickGecko Shopify. 
uh, POS systems, and then I just perform all the calculations uh, either through Python or through Power BI, and then I use I show it to my colleagues for them to discuss stuff. Yeah, so you can just click publish here and then it will go up. But because this is not a pro license, so the visualizations won't show. Let me just um, the everything else will show. <laughs> yes. Uh, how central is the Python environment itself? Like, can you connect to the internet or like hitting, hitting some external API or hitting some local files like loading some models or something? Are you are you? So Python, uh, so Power BI has a like their own like software called a data gateway in which it will like run as long as the PC is running to query files from this particular machine so that it can constantly update and show the latest results as long as your machine is running. So is that does that answer your question? No, I'm thinking like say you have a visualization that in fact pushes that to some API somewhere. I have clients that want to select that up with Power BI. Mm -hmm. When they're happy with that, they want to say so what to do with something else. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am so okay. Let me just show you what I would do. It's a it's a little bit hacky. So, uh, one sec. Da 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 da. All right. So because this is not a pro license, uh, these things don't show. <laughs> but uh, if you have a pro license, uh, I think it will show. So yeah. All right. So. Uh, I saw someone raising a hand. No. Okay. So yeah, basically that's just a very specific use case uh, for people who are just you know starting out to learn Python. You know, if you need to just if you if you deal with a lot of um, business analysis work, you know, this is a very simple way for you to just visualize data. You know, show some of your work um, on machine on machine learning, data science, incorporate them into your daily analysis works. So I think that will really help you practice. And uh, it will really, you know, sh add value to your company as well. Hopefully, because it has added for me. Yep. So I think that's it. All right. Cool.